Hey guys, what's up? Zach from All Strength Training. Uh, today's video topic is insulin sensitivity. I wanna talk about what insulin sensitivity is, I wanna talk about why it matters, and I wanna talk about what you can do to make your body more insulin sensitive. So insulin sensitivity, essentially, in, in the, the shortest way to, to describe it as possible, is how well your body tolerates carbohydrates. Uh, now it's kind of a simplified way to look at it, but essentially that's kind of what it boils down to. So basically when you take in any sort of carbohydrates, uh, whether it be grains or, or sugar uh, or, you know, whatever, uh, and, and to, a, to a lesser extent, even different types of protein your body will secrete insulin uh, to shuttle that, that food uh, from, from glycogen into your muscles, into your liver, and into potentially your fat cells. So basically what we want is, let's say we take in 25 grams of carbs, and let's say a normally functioning body needs to put out five units of insulin to move those 25 grams of carbs into our muscle and into our liver. If we don't tolerate carbs super well, then often what'll happen is our pancreas might have to put out 10 units of insulin to do five units of insulin's job. Basically what that means is that it's not going to be able to get nutrients into your muscle tissue and into your liver as effectively as it should. So often the reason that will happen is basically overuse. So Often it's someone who's got you know, a, a chronically high carb diet or potentially it could be something like a stress-induced insulin resistance. You know, Someone with really wildly dysregulated stress management and cortisol regulation issues could potentially create insulin resistance without even the presence of carbs. That in and of itself is probably a different topic for a different day, but just know that it's not always just gonna come down to pointing the finger at carbs. So, what we want is we want to be relatively sensitive. Sensitive means we put out less insulin for our carbs and our protein. Insulin resistance means we've got to put out more insulin to handle the same amount of carbs. The reason why this is super important is insulin in of itself is classified more as like a storage hormone. So basically your body secretes insulin when it needs to get something out of your bloodstream and put it into a part of your body. So the three places again that this is gonna go, mostly are gonna be your muscle tissue, your liver, and your fat cells. Now, even uh, things like your brain also have insulin receptors. So some of this you know, can also impact how, how well your cognition goes and your focus and, and things like that. But we've got places that we want to shuttle these these nutrients to so your body puts out insulin to move those nutrients out of the bloodstream because we don't want to let them sit there and just circulate forever the reason why we need to keep our our insulin levels is not bottomed out but we want to keep them under control is while you're putting out insulin that puts your body in more of a, a storage state, which just means that your body doesn't do two things all that well at the same time. So it's hard to be in a storage state and in a state where your body is taking fat from fat cells and moving it now back into the bloodstream. The expression I like to use with this is it's really hard to ride two horses with one ass. Okay, so if we've got one horse going this way and one horse going this way, we've either got to pick a direction, okay, and we can't do both at the same time, or we ultimately end up going nowhere because we can't veer off to any one direction. So it's not that you can't mobilize any fat during this state, but it's, it's gonna be significantly less, and it's gonna be a lot harder to do. So you're just making it harder on your body to make your fat cells accessible for fuel. So more or less, that's kind of the really the big issue. Now granted, this also requires you so still look at, are you in a calorie deficit? Are you in a calorie surplus? If you're in a calorie deficit, you know, even with dysregulated insulin issues, you're not gonna be gaining fat during that time. You'll just have a harder time losing it. You know, if you're in a calorie surplus, now you've got the, the added concern that, well, those insulin levels are high, you might have you know, a, a likelihood to start adding more body fat because your muscles and your liver only hold so much sugar okay and it's a lot slower to add more muscle than it is to add an extra fat cell so we kind of want to make sure that it's not that and the way that we do this is it does not need to be 
just tanking your carbs. We don't need to do to go to one extreme and, and start doing a, an Atkins diet or a South Beach diet or a ketogenic diet. You know, it's not necessarily the absence of carbs. So there are a few things that we can do to raise somebody's insulin sensitivity. Now, some of that are gonna be diet related, some are gonna be training related, and some are gonna be more lifestyle related. So one of the easiest things we can do to raise insulin sensitivity is to strength train, okay? Your body relies really heavily on carbs for fuel during strength training. Now, what we want is we want your body to use the carbs from your muscle tissue so that you're making room for more sugar to go into that muscle tissue later on. So. One thing we can do is we can strength train, we can use a relatively low carb meal before a strength training. Again, not no carb, but maybe it's, you know, some protein, a little bit of fat and a mild amount of carbs. Maybe it's a piece of toast, maybe it's a, a small serving of oatmeal, maybe it's a, a piece of fruit, but we don't want too many carbs in that, that pre-workout meal because then we're just gonna end up using those carbs during our training instead of pulling carbs from our, our liver and from our muscle tissue. So strength training in and of itself sort of clears the way for more carbs to be stored as, as fuel later on. In addition, after your training, sense, uh, training session is over, you naturally become more insulin sensitive because when you've trained, you've pushed a ton of blood into your muscles. Okay, and what your body is gonna do is in that maybe 60 to, to 120 minutes after the training session is over, your body's gonna move that blood back away from the muscles of your arms and your legs and your chest and your shoulders. It's gonna move it more back towards the middle of your body. So you've got this circulating blood that when there's nutrients in that bloodstream now, it's already moving really effectively back into muscle tissue. We don't have to raise insulin. So post-training, you've got a higher level of insulin sensitivity. So a couple of things we can do. So we can use a lower carb meal prior to training, train hard, you know, and I would highly recommend doing more of a, a muscle building approach. Low rep strength training is not really great for this. You know, so we want the average set to probably last maybe a good 40 to 70 seconds, just so that there's enough work to deplete carbs from the muscle. And then we want to use that post-training meal as a chance to take in our carbs. So we want to move more of our carbs to around our training and then shift carbs away from the meals that don't center on training, training sessions. Uh, this is often why you'll see if you're familiar with carb cycling, carb cycling uses basically an approach where calories and carbs are lower on days you're not lifting because you're not gonna have that natural spike in insulin sensitivity around the workout. And then carbs are, are elevated on days where you're training and specifically in the meals that surround your training session. So there's, there's a, you know, a really simple strategy we can do there. Like I said, it does kind of require a bit more of a repetition focus. Now you don't need to be doing sets of 20 and 30, but we wanna put you in a position where your average set might last maybe 40 or 70 seconds. Okay. so. We can, we can start with training, okay? Highly, highly recommend strength training. In addition, when you add more muscle tissue, you're gonna become more insulin sensitive because now you've got more places for sugar to go without having to require uh, storage as, as body fat. This is why, you know, there's, there's a lot of additional benefits to, to muscle besides just the workout itself. So we can do that with our training. Okay, I mentioned from a nutritional strategy, a couple things we can do is we can move more of our carbs around our workout. Okay, another thing that I would highly recommend doing if we wanna heighten insulin sensitivity is just eating on a predictable schedule. Okay, one of the biggest things that we see is I'd mentioned stress-induced insulin resistance earlier. Honestly, one of the big things that happens when people don't eat on a regular schedule is we miss meals and then we just make shitty decisions. Okay. If we're two hours past the point where we should have already eaten and our blood sugar levels have tanked, your body is going to be looking for a way to compensate for that. So that's why when we get really, really tired and really stressed out, the types of food we tend to want to pick are those really sugary, really fast acting types of food. Nobody tends to get hangry and looks for a ribeye and broccoli. They tend to look for something out of a vending machine, something from fast food, something from a snack bin. You know, so all those types of things are bad ideas when you are eating on a really unpredictable schedule. 
Okay, so one of the, the easiest things we can do is just start eating more consistently. That way we can sort of prevent some of those bad decisions by not having to face a combination of stress and hunger at the same time. Okay, because that's easily one of the worst things that we can be faced with if we're trying to improve this. So, and then, you know, so we've looked at training, we've looked at diet. Now, another thing we can do is we can supplement. Uh, now, this is, is not going to be the magic pill sort of thing, but it can definitely help the process. So, one thing that really helps is something called glucose disposal agents. Okay, so there's a bunch of different supplements that do this. Basically, what they do is they move sugar out of the bloodstream without requiring as much insulin. So, again, if we were producing 10 units of insulin, maybe using a glucose disposal agent with a meal, especially one that contains carbs, can help drop the amount of insulin we put out to maybe only five units, which is maybe where we want it. So uh, you can find a, a fair amount of blends, you know, from different supplement companies um, on the market, you know, but the, the different things that you'll see, so there are things like cinnamon, there are things like chromium, there are things like berberine. Uh, berberine essentially is like an herbal version of metformin. Metformin is a super common medication for someone who's pre-diabetic or diabetic to be put on to help improve their insulin sensitivity. Uh, berberine is basically an herbal version of that same thing. Uh, it's really cheap, it's really easy to use, it's incredibly safe, it's got tons of research behind it. Uh, so I do recommend, especially when you're trying to get this process started, not just waiting for your body to naturally get caught up and improve its insulin sensitivity on its own, I'm a fan of using something to kind of jumpstart the process. So I like using some of those supplements, again, especially early on when someone is in a, in a fat loss phase and they're struggling to kind of get body fat going, adding something like that can be super beneficial. So uh, I recommend taking it, you know, at least twice a day and it'll depend on what you're taking, you know, but I would just put it at meals where, where there's carbs being consumed. Uh, now, one thing that's super important is all of this, in order to, to increase fat mobilization requires you to be in a calorie deficit. Okay, calories in, calories out is still one of the, the most critical components of this entire process. So if we're overeating, regardless of all these other things that we're doing, we just still have too much food circulating in our body and we don't have a use for it. So some of it is gonna still end up being stored as body fat. So, but what this does is if we can improve insulin sensitivity while we're in our calorie deficit, then we can speed the process up. You know, some people are really slow starters and it might take them four, six, eight weeks to kind of get their body to actually start shedding fat. And then often what they'll find is the process starts to speed up. And usually what's happening is over those first four, six, eight weeks, maybe they started off incredibly insulin resistant, but they started to change things and then their body is becoming more insulin sensitive. So definitely something that I would recommend making a, a top priority when you're looking at starting anything slanted towards body fat loss. Um, if you've got questions on insulin sensitivity, feel free to throw them in the comments below. Uh, make sure you do like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Uh, you'll see a lot more over the coming weeks, especially as you guys all get rolling with your New Year's resolutions and your uh, training programs for 2023.